What happens if you install too many case fans inside of your PC? Does double stacking or even triple stacking fans together lead to better performance? Well, to find out answers to these types of questions, today we'll be installing more and more case fans into our computer until we physically run out of space, and along the way, might just discover the most optimal air cooling method in the entire world. Starting with fans 1 through 11, these each have a dedicated spot inside of our PC case, which for this experiment is the APNX C1, a brand new performance focused mid tower that we'll be taking full advantage of throughout this video. Out of the box, we have four case fans that come included with the C1, three 140mm fans intake and one 120mm fan exhaust, which will give us a baseline temperature measure for our CPU, GPU, and our system. Adding three more exhaust fans along the top increases our total count to seven, while also improving the measured temperature of both our CPU and GPU. So far, more fans equals more better, but let's see just how long that can hold up. By removing the C1's built-in GPU arm support, we now have access to three more fan slots along the backside of the case, which, once filled with some more exhaust fans, further decreases the GPU's temp. And now with these 10 fans installed, you might be wondering where in the world does the 11th dedicated fan actually go? <laughs> this one's pretty sneaky. To find it, we'll need to comb through our jungle of cable management along the back side of the motherboard. Moving this panel reveals that we can actually install a fan onto this support beam. This is actually a super clever design by APNX that allows an additional fan to be pressed up directly against the underside of the CPU socket. You could also install SSDs or hard drives along this back beam, but I think it's a really cool, super unique approach that takes full advantage of this case's surrounding mesh exterior. And since the CPU does produce a lot of heat, does having a fan behind it actually make a difference? Well, at least in my testing in this video, the processor didn't appear to be all that affected with the additional airflow behind it, although I can definitely see this coming in handy in specific CPU motherboard configurations. In fact, the more I think about it, if a processor and motherboard was designed to let off heat on the front and back side, that technically doubles the amount of surface area that we could use for cooling it. Can you imagine a system with two AIOs that sandwich a CPU? That, I mean, that sounds cool. Regardless, we've now filled up all of the dedicated fan spots within our performance case here, but we're just getting started. Adding three more intake fans along the bottom of our PC increases the count to 14, but surprisingly doesn't improve our cooling numbers all that much since this one here is literally just sucking hot air directly from our power supply. So to make an actual difference in the temperature of our components, we're going to have to pull air from a fresher air source. It's time to think outside of the box, <laughs> literally. With 12 case fans stacked together in three columns of four, we can now fully replace the side glass panel of our case with nothing but pure airflow. And in fact, it looks like we have just a bit too much airflow without some extra support, but the fans powerful enough to blow themselves over in this orientation. For the time being, we'll MacGyver them together with some sticky tack to make sure they have enough structural integrity to stay up. And as long as we've properly daisy chained all of our ARGB and power cables together with the help of some of these little hubs here, our official fan count is now up to a whopping 26 total. Check this out, the numbers speak for themselves. This is the coldest temperature on all of our measurements that we've seen in this entire experiment. This might just be the future of air cooling inside of a PC. With so much airflow blowing directly onto our components, this thing is honestly keeping everything super cool. That said, there's a couple of major downsides. One of them is that this setup is the loudest, noisiest one that we've tested as well. Not gonna lie, that's pretty loud. It's clocking in at nearly 10 decibels louder than the next loudest test. And while this is now technically an open phase PC since we've removed the glass panel, a lot of dust could get into our PC and making cleaning it really difficult. You also can't see your components anymore if that's an issue to you. And lastly, the cable management is like a disaster. <laughs> a bit more on that later, but if all you cared about in the world was having the coldest PC as possible, this might just be something to consider. But is it the most optimal setup that we can come up with with this many fans? To find out, we'll tear down that wall, reallocate our resources, and explore the world of fan stacking. On paper, if we double the amount of fans on top of each other, that should double the amount of airflow and double the cooling performance, right? And if true, does that mean we could put four fans on top of each other and quadruple the cooling potential of our PC case? I would love to believe that this is true, but let's put it to the test to find out. For this part of the experiment, we'll focus solely on our CPU and stack more and more of our APNX fans on top of our cooler to see what happens. If our initial hypothesis is true, we should have an ice cold processor by the end of this stack. But what happens in reality? As you can see, doubling the amount of fans does not directly lead to double the amount of thermal efficiency. And in fact, at some point, adding more fans actually increases the heat of the system. How crazy is that? 
It turns out that case fans like these push out air at a 45 degree angle, and so adding fans directly on top of one another ends up leading to a bunch of turbulence that decreases the efficiency of the entire system. And while that all happens, the buildup of static pressure between all of the fans can make it more difficult for air to get through in the first place. But taking this test beyond just a CPU cooler, what happens if we install double stacked fans throughout our entire PC case? Well, to find out, we can add an additional fan back here, two down below, one here as well, three up top, and three more along the back side. And yet, as we saw a bit earlier, this actually leads to a worse performance than not having them at all. With this setup, we've created a bunch of airflow streams that collide into each other, likely creating even some warm pockets of air throughout the turbulence. <laughs> not necessarily ideal if you want to keep your entire PC cool. At this point, we have nothing to lose, so let's just shove every last fan we have into the case and just see what happens. As you can imagine, this ends up posting an even worse result than our previous test. All we really did was add more turbulence to the fire. Now, a little while ago, I surveyed you all, and it turns out that most of you have between 3 and 5 case fans inside of your PC, which seems like a solid number to be at. But in interesting takeaway from today is you can use fan positioning to optimize your PC for specific use cases. For example, this fan setup cooled our GPU ever so slightly more effectively than anything else we tested. And so if you happen to have an overburdened GPU or one that runs particularly hot, it might be worth swapping your fans around to increase airflow around the card. It helps so much to have a PC case that actually gives you the flexibility to make these types of adjustments with tons of fan slot options. APNX was kind enough to send out their performance C1 case for this video and it ended up being genuinely enjoyable enjoyable to build inside of. My favorite aspect of it by far is how easy you can disassemble it. The side panel, back panel, top panel, and even front can all be removed without needing to use a screwdriver. It's honestly so convenient, I wish every case I owned was the same way. Pulling off the back panel reveals some even more intriguing design decisions, like having mesh paneling nearly everywhere. We saw earlier that this allows for some super unique fan placements throughout the case, and I really don't mind it visually either. Speaking of visuals, have you noticed how curved the edges of this case truly are? <laughs> While unboxing it, it was the very first thing that I noticed. It's so smooth and it definitely gives off a different kind of vibe than the hard cut edge type of case. And in fact, this curved nature is mirrored in the APNX case fans as well. It certainly makes them stand out from traditional case fans that have those more exposed corners. And on top of that, the FP1s are around 5mm thicker than typical fans, leading to a claimed performance bump. Again, one of these 120mm FP1s come in the back of the C1 case, and three 140mm FP1s come in the front. The case itself with these included fans, I believe retails at around $159 in this particular multicolored finish that blends from light blue to purple depending on your viewing angle. They call it chroma flare, but the case also comes in standard black and white as well. I love how you can catch a glimpse of the colored finish peeking out from the inside of the case. Now, the only thing that I found myself not loving about this case was the fact that the front panel extends all the way to the bottom of the feet, meaning that you can't slip your hand underneath the front here while trying to lift it up and move it around. It's not the biggest deal in the world, especially because your PC is not swapping locations all that often, but every single time I tried to pick this thing up, I'd instinctively reach towards the front and, you know, just hit a wall, realize I had to grab it from the other side. More of a small inconvenience, if anything, but on the plus side, not having that gap between the front feet does technically look more aesthetically pleasing. All in all, the APNX C1 was a breeze to build in, pun intended, and I'd highly recommend it if you're looking for a performance-focused mid-tower case that has a ton of fan placement options. Although I'd also recommend sticking to one of the more standard fan orientations before dumping 30 case fans inside and expecting an ice cold PC. And thanks again to APNX for sponsoring this video. You can check out the C1 case, their FP1 fans, and their other PC offerings in the description down below. And that's all I have for you today. So as always, I'm Mr. Easter, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one.